My ear is too small. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي خلق الخلق فأحصاهم عددا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له لم يتخذ صاحبة ولا ولدا إن كل من في السماوات والأرض إلا آت الرحمن عبدا لقد أحصاهم وعدهم عدا وكلهم آتيه يوم القيامة فردا وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمدا إمام الهدى صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن اقتفى أثرهم فاقتدى واهتدى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا وليخشى الذين لو تركوا من خلفهم ذرية ضعافا خافوا عليهم فليتقوا الله وليقولوا قولا سديدا وبعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله خير الهدى هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم شر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد Dear brothers and sisters as we are here this weekend inshallah for the conference about ruqya and the treatment from possession and information about the unseen it is important to develop, before we start that conference, 
a concept that is part of our aqidah as Muslims, which is led from the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that was narrated by Imam Tirmidhi and others, and the authority of Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhuma. He said, "I was riding with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he said to me, 'Ya Ghulam, inni muallimuka kalimat. O young boy, I will teach you some words." specific words that you need in your life he said protect Allah or be conscious about Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect you protect the religion of Allah and follow his commands Allah will, will be with you وَاعْلَمْ أَنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرًا وَأَنَّ مَعَ الْكَرْبِ فَرَجًا وَاعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَوْ اجْتَمَعَتِ الْأُمَّةُ عَلَى أَنْ يَنْفَعُوكَ بِشَيْءٍ لَنْ يَنْفَعُوكَ إِلَّا بِشَيْءٍ قَدْ كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ لَكَ أَوْ قَدَّرَهُ اللَّهُ لَكَ وَاعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَوْ اجْتَمَعَتِ الْأُمَّةُ عَلَى أَنْ يَضُرُّوكَ بِشَيْءٍ لَنْ يَضُرُّوكَ إِلَّا بِشَيْءٍ قَدْ كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكَ he said, Know that if all of mankind at the end of the hadith were to come together to benefit you, they will not be able to do so except if Allah has decreed upon you. And know that if all of mankind were to come together to harm you, they won't be able to do so except if Allah has decreed from you, for you. Rufi'at al aqlam, the pens have been lifted and the books are dried. This concept of aqidah, that there is no harm or benefit except by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command. No one on earth could bring you benefit or stop harm except if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed. And this is a very important concept when dealing with these matters of jinn and shayateen and ruqya and possession and magic and ta'wizat and all of these uh, uh, kind of afflection or trials that Allah tests His servants with. We have to understand that our reliance, our tawakkul upon Allah is stronger than these plotting or these planning. Our aqidah should be as strong to defeat and must defeat the shaitan and the shayateen in general. Subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has cleared for this ummah their enemy from day one. Because this enemy, he came in public and he announced that we are his enemy. So Allah taught us how to defend ourselves and protect ourselves from such an affliction. And subhanallah, day one, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam, Alayhi salam, he commanded the angels to make sujood. So they all made sujood. وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ سُجُودُ لِآدَمَ فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسِ Except the shaitan, Iblis, alayhi la'natu Allah. He declared war from day one. He said, قَالَ أَنَا خَيْرٌ مِّنْهُ خَلَقْتَنِي مِنْ نَارٍ وَخَلَقْتَهُ مِنْ طِينٍ You created me, I'm better than him, you created me from fire and he created him from clay or mud then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said why didn't you make sujood when I commanded you he said I am not going to make sujood for someone that you created from mud then Allah commanded him and he said that you will enter hellfire by Allah's command he said قَالَ رَبِّ فَأَنظِرْنِي إِلَى يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ قَالَ فَإِنَّكَ مِنَ الْمُنظَرِينَ إِلَىٰ وَقْتِ الْيَوْ إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ الْوَقْتِ الْمَعْلُومِ Look what Allah gave him. He said, Oh Allah, then give me a chance. I want to continue living till the day of judgment. Subhanallah, not to repent, not to change his mind, not to go back on his word, not to think about what he has done and ask Allah for forgiveness, but for one plan. قَالَ فَبِعِزَّتِكَ لَأُغْيَنَّهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ he said, by your majesty, he's swearing by Allah's majesty that he's going to mislead all of them, meaning Adam and his creation. So Allah sent them down to earth for the battle to start. 
And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to us, Ya Bani Adam, la yaftinannakum ash-shaytan. Don't let the shaytan fool you. Don't let the shaytan plan against you. Don't let the shaytan mis- misguide you. Don't let the shaytan deceive you. And many, many of us today, except whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon, are being led by this planning, even though we know it. We are warned from it. We have clear direction on how to deal with it. Among our families, our friends, neighbors, community, shayateen are all over the place. All their one goal is to mislead the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that the result would be that they will all enter hellfire together. The Prophet sallallahu said in the hadith narrated by Imam Muslim, he said, إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ قَدْ يَأِسَ أَنْ يَعْبُدَهُ الْمُصَلُّونَ فِي جَزِيرَةِ الْعَرَبِ Shaytan has given up for the worshippers to worship him again. خلاص, those people who have followed the clear guidance, have seen the direction by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, have seen this light, the nur of the truth that comes to their heart, they will not worship the shaytan. But he will cause problem and conflicts among them. So many planning and the shaytan is not going to give up. Because the plan is, I am continuing to do that till the day of judgment. That's what he said. قَالَ فَبِعِزَّتِكَ لَأُغْوِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ إِلَّا عِبَادَكَ مِنْهُمُ الْمُخْلَصِينَ The exception here is very important. He said, except those who are المخلصين, some قرأ المخلصين, those who are being sincere, or those whom Allah have chosen to be مخلص. That they were chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that position. The shaytan cannot, but he will try. He'll try. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it very clearly. The problem is, dear brothers and sisters, that anywhere we travel, we speak about the affliction of jinn, or we speak about the ruqya and people who are possessed with jinn or magic or evil eye or envy or any of these uh, uh, trials or affliction. It seems that people, instead of getting stronger and they're fighting back, they get weaker and get scared. And the whole concept of that is to make, to make more clarification on the concept of our aqidah and the unseen, not to be scared. Why? This ayah solves the problem. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna kayda shaytani kana da'ifa. The plotting and the planning of the shaytan is very weak. It depends on how strong you are. He is already weak. His planning is weak. But it, as a Muslim... As a believer, there is no difference between us, and I know, please try to understand this right, no difference between us and Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu arda, except that he's a Sahabi, he's chosen by Allah to be a Sahabi, has great iman, but in physical or in belief, we are both Muslims. Of course, he's, he got the, 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 the blessing of Allah to see Rasulullah to become close friend to the Prophet Sallallahu the closest to Rasulullah after Abu Bakr. But in reality, the, it wasn't that Umar was created from something that is different from us. It's the same person. He used to say about himself that I used to worship idols that are made from dates. And when I get hungry, I eat them. That's Umar. Umar today that we are, when we hear his story, his life story, we're so amazed that, that, that was him before Islam. But then the Imam, the Imam came in his heart to a point that the shaitan would not take the same bath that Umar radiallahu anhu was taking. The only difference is the heart. That heart that is full of Iman that led the shaitan to be afraid of one of Allah's creation like that. And it's not only limited to Umar radiallahu anhu wa Allah made it for the believers. The stronger you are, the weaker they are. But does that mean that they will give up? No. The shaitan, as Ibn, Ibn Jawzi rahimahullah mentioned in Talbis Iblis, he said that the shaitan has a planning and a plotting for every individual and he knows the entrance to your heart. There are some people that the shaitan easily enter from the door of money. Someone's from the door of salah, subhanAllah. Salah, yes. 
He'll make you do the salah, come to the masjid, be in the front row, but he will change the intention in your heart, and instead of doing it for Allah, you're doing it for a show off. He won over. There are other people who the shaitan can enter from that door, but he knows the other doors that they are weaker in. So our job in this life is to block the means, the veins to the shayateen. In the shaitan al-yajri min ibn Adam majra dam The shaitan runs in your, in your veins like the blood runs in your vein. Shaitan is that close. Aisha radiallahu anha radha and Rasulullah left her at night. And then she, she was moving her hand and she found his, his pot next to her, uh, Sallam, warm, but she didn't feel him. So she woke up scared. And he was visiting al baqia but she thought he went to his other wives, one of their families. So she, she ran after him. So, so she saw him, and when she saw him making dua at al baqia she came back running, and Rasulullah saw her he, of course, didn't see her at night. He saw something running. So when he came to the room, she was breathing very loudly. So he hit her and he woke her. He said, Yeah, Aisha, were you the, the black figure, that thing that I was seeing at night? Were you running? And she said, Oh, yeah, Rasulullah. I thought, he said, Subhanallah, you thought that I will be unfair to you? It's your night. I won't leave you in that. You know, did the shaitan whisper to you? Shaitan came to your shaitan. So, mashallah, she was a smart wife. We wish we had time to do that. But she was a smart wife. She changed the topic. She said, do I have a shaitan with me? He said, yeah, every one of us has two qareen. Qareen from the shaitan and qareen from the angel. So she said, even you, Rasulullah? He said, yes. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has held me against him. Fa'aslama means that I'm protected. Or fa'aslama, that I am saved from him. Or he not became Muslim because the shaitan don't become Muslim, but in a sense that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has protected me from his harm. So he told her, Qareem is some shaitan who is born, stays with you, whispers, and, shayt- and, and Qareem from the angels. And Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu or Abu Sa'id said in the hadith, he said, if you want to read it, read it in Surah Qaf. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned both Qareen. Now you have the Qareen. In Sahih Muslim, narrated by Abu Huraira, he said, the shaitan of the believer and the shaitan of the disbeliever met. Allah knows where. They met. The shaitan of the believer was seen with rusty clothes, messy hair, very weak, you know, very skinny. And the shaitan of the disbeliever looked well developed, you know, nice hair combed, nice clothes. So the shaitan of the believer asked the shaitan of this believer asked the shaitan of the believer, "Why do you look like that? How did you end up being like that?" He said, "I am assigned to a person. When he eats, he says Bismillah. When he drinks, he says Bismillah. When he wears his clothes, he says Bismillah. So I'm, I get nothing out of him. That's how he looked like." The other shaitan says, "Well, Alhamdulillah, I'm with this person. He does everything without saying anything. So I, I also get portion of it." Hadith Sahih Muslim. So the, it, it's us who helps the shayateen. And the, there are shayateen from the ends, shayateen of the human that sometimes are worse. They have plannings or plotting that are sometimes worse than the shayateen of the jinn. But the, the whole concept of shayateen and, and their misguidance and you know misleading people, as I said, it's not to scare us. It's to protect us because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants what's best for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed us the way. And he says, this is the way of the shaitan. Don't be deceived. Don't follow it. This is the way of Ar-Rahman. This is the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Things that will get you away. They make things look better to you. They make things more amazed that you think. Amusement of dunya and running after dunya and being after dunya is the way of the shaitan. There are others who are Temptated by desires, certain desires and shahawat, and they, they are led by that. There are people who c- desires don't affect them as much, but shubuhat, doubts in their hearts. Shayateen are willing to do everything. Ibn al Qayyim rahimahullah mentioned, he said that the shaitan will come to a person, and this is the, the, the strategy here, to a person on the sunnah, not to anybody else, on the sunnah. And he will add to him innovations in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
to lead him away from that or to make him do actions that are less valuable than other or has less virtues. If he can't find that, then he would add some show off in his actions. If he cannot add that, he continues to mislead the individual till the person leaves the bath of the sunnah, the bath of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and returns away from it. Then what? قال فبعزتك لأغوينهم أجمعين إلا عبادك منهم المخلصين قال فالحق والحق أقول لأملأن جهنم منك ومن من تبعك منهم أجمعين الله said I swear by my majesty then I will throw you and your followers I will add on you and your followers to hellfire and those who follow your footstep now those who follow his footstep shouldn't be any of us should be that we are warned by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam in many hadith the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us how to protect ourselves not just the protection that by doing salah or doing some adhkar the protection by growing the iman and develop that iman in the heart and as I said the strategies of the shaitan are known and they are step by step Shaitan will never come to an individual and just says, stop doing salah. Because he knows that's not going to work. He's not going to stop. So he, he temptates him through other things. You know, there, there, there are people who are doing things less important. Might not have any virtues or reward. And the shaitan makes these things in their eyes so huge that they think they're doing something beneficial. But at the end, they miss what is more important. Now, in the hadith narrated by Imam Ibn Jazir, Ibn Jawzi, rahimahullah ta'ala, and some of the scholars of tafsir mention in one of the ayat in Surah Al-Hashr, the shaytan, three individuals, three individuals of Bani Israel, they were going for, they were going out there traveling, and they left their sister behind by herself. So the shaytan temptates to them that they should go and ask this worshipper of Bani Israel who worshipped Allah 70 years. And the number 70 is an increase of a number. And if you look at the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ says he worshipped Allah 70 years. With all the respect to our elders and uh, our, our elders in the community, and, and no one, regardless of how old you are, has worshipped Allah 70 years. Even if you lived a hundred year, because you're, you're taking out the time you ate, the time you slept, the time you had to go to work, and after a hundred years of living on this earth, you will not worship Allah 70 years. It just doesn't happen. 70 years of complete ibadah, he worshiped Allah 70 years. Now the shaitan came, and the brothers went to him, and he said, they said, we are leaving our sister behind. All we need from you is you take care of her. He said, fine. They left, they traveled. Shaitan came to him. He said, Why you don't go and visit? She's your responsibility now. You're taking care of her. He said, A'udhu Billah, no way, I'm not gonna go. She's by herself. So he ended up doing what? He brought some food, he left it by her house, and then he went back to where he worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shaitan came after a few days and said, Well, how do you know that she picks up the food? At least wait till she opens the door and takes the food in, and then you could leave. So he did that. She opened up the door, she took the food, he made sure. So now he starts seeing her, and she starts seeing him. A few days later, he says, Well, she's eating by herself. Why you don't go and join her and keep the door open? No problem. You're teaching her Quran, she's your workmate, she's your classmate, your friend, she's your sister. Yeah, no, fine. Just keep the door open. So he did that, temptated. After a while, he said with her, they start eating together. Now, if, if people were to cross by, they will see you together in the house by yourself. So you should at least close the door. So, okay, they ended up continuous temptation till they fall into fornication. Long hadith. Now, when they did that, the worshiper of Bani Israel regretted what he did. But the problem is she was pregnant. So the shaitan came to me and said, now... Her pregnancy will expose you. So the only thing that you have now, the only option is that you kill her or you kill the child. 
But if you wait till you kill, the child is born and then you kill the child, their brothers will be back and they'll kill you. So it's better to get rid of them. Okay, so he did that. Her brothers came back after months and then they asked for their sister. She said, she died. She passed away. Well, they all three had the same dream from the shaitan. As the Prophet ﷺ said, وَالْحُلُمُ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ Shaitan could temptate sin. He said, the shaitan came to them and said, well, your sister was killed. And you want proven evidence? Go open up her grave and see her. She, she was pregnant and see all that. So they went, they saw her the, the, the way that the shaitan described. Who did this? The worshiper. So they, they took him in. They tied his hands and his feet. And they wanted to do what? To kill him. Shaitan came to him and he says, you want some help? I could help you. Of course, anybody wants to survive. Anybody wants, nobody wants to lose their life. How could you help? He said, disbelieve in Allah. So he disbelieved in Allah and they took him and they killed him. وَقَالَ الشَّيْطَانُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, كَمَثَلِ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ قَرِيبًا ذَاقُوا وَبَالَ أَمْرِهِمْ وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ كَمَثَلِ الشَّيْطَانِ إِذْ قَالَ لِلْإِنسَانِ اكْفُرْ فَلَمَّا كَفَرَ قَالَ إِنِّي بَرِيءٌ مِنْكَ إِنِّي أَخَافُ اللَّهَ رَبَّ الْعَالَمِينَ فَكَانَ عَاقِبَتَهُمَا أَنَّهُمَا فِي النَّارِ خَالِدَيْنِ فِيهَا وَذَلِكَ جَزَاءُ الظَّالِمِينَ When the shaytan commanded the man to disbelieve in Surah Al-Hashr, at the end of Surah Al-Hashr, when the shaytan commanded the man to disbelieve in Allah, and he disbelieved in Allah, and he said, now you're going to help me? The shaytan says, إِنِّي أَخَافُ الله. I fear Allah, I can't, I can't help you. You disbelieved in Allah, and you want me to help you? Allah said, they are both entering hellfire. That's someone who worshipped Allah 70 years, and the hearts of the humans rotates and change. As Abu Mas'ud says, I will not witness for anyone good or evil, except that I, till I see how Allah ends his life, they ask him, why is that? He said something I heard from Rasulullah sallallahu He said that the hearts are like boiling water. It keeps changing. So I want to make sure when a person dies, I see how his heart, was he firm on the deen or not? No one is saved. You're the best worshiper, you're the best musalli, you're the best person who fasts, you're the person who gives zakah, you're so generous, you come to the masjid, all of this could change. So we ask Allah to keep our heart firm. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the strength to defeat our nafs and our shaytan and the shayateen of the humans and the shayateen of the jinn. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for full protection. It's only him who protects. Allahumma ameen wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad. Alhamdulillah, rabbil alam. Alhamdulillah wa kafa wa salatan wa salaman ala ibadi alladhin astafu wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wa ahdahu la sharika wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasool sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam tasliman kathira inshallah through the weekend or Saturday tomorrow we'll have the conference and there will be many speakers inshallah speaking about the um, how do you protect yourself what is the idea of uh, possession and jinn and a very simple action that a person could do every day They'll be talking about the ruqya and how to perform ruqya upon yourself and your children for protection or for <coughs> cure. As the Prophet ﷺ says, Surah Al-Baqarah read in a house, shaytateen will not enter for three days. When you enter your house, say Bismillah, they leave. When you start eating, you say Bismillah, they say we don't find a place to stay or we don't find a place to eat. Very simple actions that we sometimes forget in our life and then we fall into this cycle of trouble and hardship and and people are not just going through a cycle of hardship they're going through cycles of changing their iman and their faith and this is what the prophet sallam described and this is the biggest fitna living in today that the prophet sallam says takunu fitanun ka al-layl al-mudhlim there will come a time where affliction will become like the dark the darkness of the night yusbihu rajul mu'minan that a person would wake up in the morning as a believer وَيُمْسِي كَافِرًا And he would sleep at night as a disbeliever. وَيُمْسِي مُؤْمِنًا وَيُصْبِحُ كَافِرًا And he sleeps as a believer and wakes up as a disbeliever. يَبِيعُ دِينَهُ بِعَرَضٍ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا He sells out his aqeedah and his creed and his religion and everything that he had. That's why the, the wasiyah of Hudayfa is very beneficial when he said إِيَّاكَ وَالتَّلَوْنَ فَإِنَّ دِينَ اللَّهِ وَاحِدٍ do not be among those who are colorful. The religion of Allah is one. But the shayateen are not going to just keep, keep you on the bath. They won't be happy to see you on the bath. 
But the more you return to Allah, the more you seek the guidance and the help and the protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you have the best of help. If you have Allah, you have everything. And if you lose Allah in your life, then you have nothing, even if you think you have anything. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect this community. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless this gathering, inshallah, and this dunya and akhirah, and make this hour as a witness for us, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the deceive and the misguidance of the shayateen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our houses and our families and our children from being misguided. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put the barakah in our life, in our provision, in our risk, in our time. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as he gathered us in this dunya, we ask him to gather us, inshallah, in akhirah with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam in the highest level of Jannah. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma akhfir lana dhunubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabbit ala al-haqi aqdamana. Allahumma jal hadha al-jama' jama'an marhuma wa jal tafarruqana min ba'dihi tafarruqan ma'asuma wa la tajal fina wa la baynana shaqiyan wa la mahruma wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi wa aqim as-salah. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلا قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استو استقيم يحمكم الله الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين كمثل الذين من قبلهم قريبا ذاقوا وبال أمرهم ولهم عذاب أليم كمثل الشيطان إذ قال للإنسان اكفر فلما كفر قال إني بريء منك إني أخاف الله رب العالمين فكان عاقبتهما أنهما في النار خالدين فيها وذلك جزاء الظالمين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون الله سمي الله لمن الله سبحان الله 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 أكبر 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا ضالين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون ولا تكونوا كالذين نسوا الله فأنساهم أنفسهم أولئك هم الفاسقون لا يستوي أصحاب النار وأصحاب الجنة أصحاب الجنة هم الفائزون الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله <تصفيق>